God today. Raise your hand. Everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I want you to hug and greet someone beside you. Tell that person, darating na ang miracle mo. Amen. Oh, yes. Give the Lord a big hand and say, well, we're ready, Lord. <laughs> a few days ago, my 10-year-old boy came up to me and he said, Daddy, what are you going to preach this Sunday? You know, our ordinary 10-year-old boy, they don't ask those kinds of questions. Am I right? You know, 10-year-old boys ask, you know, what's for breakfast? What's for lunch? What's for dinner? Will you buy me an Xbox? When will you do that? You know, but my 10-year-old boy asks, what will you preach this Sunday? And I told him, I'm going to be preaching about how to create miracles. He raised an eyebrow and he said, uh, Daddy, miracles come from God. You don't create them. And I said, that's why the message for this Sunday is shocking. Because I'm going to teach people that they have the power to create miracles. My dear friends, God is here. And God is telling you, my child, I have given you the capacity to create your miracles. I will supply the raw materials, but you will have to manufacture the miracles that you need in your life. You are a factory of miracles. I want you to hold someone's hand beside you. Just look the person in the eye. Tell that person, you are a factory of miracles. Everybody say that, I'm a factory of miracles. You know, I live in a place, if you go to my house, all surrounding our place, our little village, are factories. For somewhere, some reason, factories love our place. And in the crisis of 1997, in the Asian crisis, a lot of those factories closed down. It was so sad. You know, you've got these huge warehouses and huge places and huge, huge buildings. There are so many machines there and so many delivery trucks in the parking lot, but it's dead. Nothing is moving. They do not produce anything. Some of them, some of those factories, they were still chugging along, but they would only produce maybe one-fourth of their capacity. There are some of you here, you are a factory of miracles, yes, but you're not producing the miracles. Or some of you, you're producing some miracles, but you're producing only a fraction of the full capacity that God has given to you. And today, God, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak this word to you. Are you ready? I'm going to speak abundance to you. I'm going to declare that God will work in your life today, that you will reach full capacity, that you will start producing the miracles. You will learn today how to create miracles more miracles in your life. Are you ready? If you are, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, everybody say, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to your blessing healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In James chapter 2, verse 18, 20, 26, it says, But someone will say, One person has faith, another has actions. My answer is, Show me how anyone can have faith without actions. I will show you my faith by my actions. Can you, say, can you say that last line? I will show you my faith by my actions. Tell someone beside you, I will show you 
my faith by my actions. How will you show your faith? How will you express your faith? How will you manifest your faith? And how will you create your miracles? We're going to pray for that right now. Put your hand over your chest. Just say, Father, I come before you with an open heart. And I will receive your instruction on how to create miracles. I want to produce to the full capacity what you want me to produce. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and love Him today. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Glorify Him. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Amen. How many of you have come for the first time? Can I see a raise of hands, please? Welcome. Thank you for coming. This is your home now. We're going to give you a welcome gift. All you have to do is go to the lobby. We'll give that gift to you. Amen. Let's all be seated, everybody, and touch someone beside you. Tell that person God will speak to you today. Amen. Welcome to the feast. Welcome to the happiest place on earth. We are in our series, Wish. It is our last part, and I'm going to be talking about how to create your miracles. And God's big message for you is this, that you need faith-filled action. Faith-filled action is necessary for creating miracles. I, sh I have this favorite story I'd love, I, I, I share a lot. You know, many, many years ago when I was still young and handsome, now I'm just irresistible. I was giving a retreat to a group, a bunch of kohelialas, you know, female college students. And I was in the bedroom of the retreat house and I was preparing for my talks when there was this regular cockroach that came in and was buzzing up in the, around the room. And it wasn't really bothering me, but, you know, it was like, I'm not scared of these bugs. But anyway, it was just there, you know, circling around. And I, I, I really don't know why I did this, but I did it. I pointed, it, pointed to it, and I said, in Jesus' name, come down and die. <laughs> and in two or three seconds, this is unbelievable, in two or three seconds, it like it hit an invisible wall, boom! And then it dropped down to the cement tiles, circled around for two more seconds, and died on the spot. And I said, whoa. And I raised my finger like it was a gun and blew the smoke. And I said, wow. So anyway, I went, it was my talk now, and so I went out of the room, and I started giving this talk to this uh, group of college women. And as I was giving the talk, remember the cockroach in my room? It was like the grandfather cockroach came in, seeking revenge. And it was circling around. You can just imagine, you, I was speaking to a group of what? Okay college women. You can just imagine the impact, the dramatic effect that had on them. It's like, you know, as it was buzzing around the room, you know, all these women were trying to listen, but then, you know, and they started hiding beneath the desk, you know, and, and you, there's all these squeals, you know. And I remembered what I did in my room, but you see, it was very different now because in my room it was private. If nothing happened, it would be fine. But now I was saying, what if I do it and then nothing will happen? But I made a decision, I'll do it, you know. Remember, I was still young and handsome at that time. I was, what, 18, 19 years old. I was still crazy. And so what I did was in the middle of my talk, I just paused 
And then I pointed to the cockroach and I said, in Jesus' name, come down and die. And guess what? Zip. And it splashes its entrails right there on the cement tiles and dies. And all these women were looking at me, their jaws dropping, and they said, who is this man that even the cockroaches obey him? And to make it appear as though it happens to me regularly, I said matter-of-factly and very casually, as I was saying. <laughs> so anyway, after my talk, I went back to my room and I was preparing for my next talk. And I was seated like that, reading my Bible, when another cockroach came crawling up the wall like that, right in front of the desk. I will not, with the goodness and the kindness, of, out of the kindness of my heart, I will not tell you what retreat house this is. <laughs> it was very old. And this cockroach was crawling up the wall, crawling up the wall. And you know what I did. I mean, I had two power encounters already, right? Right? Huh? Huh? So I said, <clears throat> in Jesus' name, come down and die. And the cockroach kept crawling. Now I was thinking maybe the antennas were not up. And they, the, the little critter was not listening to me. And so I repeated myself in a louder voice. In Jesus' name, come down and die. And it kept on crawling and crawling, you know, minding its own business. And I said, why isn't it working? And then I heard the voice of God. Not, not audibly, not bow. This is God. No, 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 no. It was a thought that pierced through. It's just a normal thought. But you, I knew it was God speaking to me. You got what I'm saying? And he did not speak in old English, in dignified, noble old English. He did not use thou and thy and thus saith the Lord. He, he, he did not speak in Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic or any kind of ancient biblical language. He did not speak in Latin. He spoke in Filipino. And you know what God told me? Ask me, what? God said, Kunin mo yung chinelas mo, patayin mo, tamad. In English, God said, get your slipper, kill it, don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. And, and I, 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 I really felt God was laughing and I was laughing with him. And it was an amazing moment of realizing, when I was 18 years old, it, it made me realize something, that God will not do for you what you can do for yourself. In fact, the reason why He will not do what you can do for yourself is because He does not steal from you the opportunity for growth. It is only when you do what you can do for yourself and take responsibility that you begin to stretch and you begin to break your limits, and then you begin to develop, and then you begin to expand, and then you begin to grow, and then you can become what God wants you to become. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Friends, how many of you want miracles in your life? Everybody say, I want a miracle. I want lots of them. There are two ingredients. How many? There are two ingredients that you have to blend to be able to produce a miracle. And the two ingredients are, number one, you need to ask. Everybody say ask. And number two, you need to act. Everybody say act. What's number one? Ask. What's number two? Act. You, you have to ask. And, and the reason why I give you a novena to God's love, every time you come up here and be the first timer, I give this to you the very first time. I want you to act. Ask. I want you to write down seven dreams. The reason why I, I, I made you make a, a, a uh, dream board, and this is the dream board of my little boy. You know, the reason why I teach you to have dream boards is to learn how to ask. It is so important to ask. It's so important to have a 
picture of what you want in your life and to fix your eyes on that picture because then you will know that when the miracle comes, it's there and it comes from God, it comes from your prayer. Can you touch someone beside you and tell that person, ask? Learn to ask. Learn to ask again. Learn to ask again and again. Learn, learn to ask with passion. Learn to ask with belief. You've got to believe. Everybody say believe. But then there is a second ingredient, and the second ingredient is act. One more time, say act. Once upon a time, I thought that faith and action were at war. Once upon a time, I thought that faith and action were in conflict and could not coexist. I was very, very wrong. There was once upon a time when I thought that if I really believe that God will provide for me, saving money and buying insurance was a sign that I did not believe and trust God enough. Do you hear me? Once upon a time, I thought that if you believe that God would heal you, taking care of your health was a sign that you did not trust God. Once upon a time, I thought that if, that if I believe that God will anoint me as I preach to you, preparing for my talk was a sign that I did not trust God. How wrong I was. Do you now know what I believe in? Ask me what. Say it in a complete sentence. Brother Bo, what do you believe in? I believe that action is the clearest, loudest, most powerful, most eloquent expression of faith. You didn't hear that. It didn't register. I said something powerful. I said that action is the loudest, clearest, most powerful, most eloquent expression of faith. I'll have to say it again because it's not registering. Faith and action, they don't collide. They work together. They're one. Faith and action are one. In fact, I'm going to read you Hebrews 11. Are you familiar with Hebrews 11? How many of you are familiar with Hebrews 11? Raise your hand. Um, very f How many of you are familiar with 7-11? Uh, uh. in, in Hebrews 11, you call this the hall of faith. This is not a hall of fame. This is a hall of faith where the Bible starts talking about the who's who in the Old Testament. Are you ready? These are the great patriarchs and prophets and the followers and the leaders of God. Are you ready? It says here. Are you ready? To have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. It was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. Oh, here it is. Are you ready? It was faith that made Abel offer to God a better sacrifice than Cain's. It was faith that made Noah hear God's warnings about things in the future that he could not see. It was faith that made Abraham obey when God called him to go out to a country which God had promised to give him. He left his own country without knowing where he was going. It was by faith that made the parents of Moses hide him for three months after he was born. It was by faith that made Moses leave Egypt without being afraid of the king's anger. It was by faith that made Israelites able to cross the Red Sea as if on dry land when the Egyptians tried to do it, the water swallowed them up. Should I go on? There isn't enough time for me to speak of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through their faith, they fought whole countries and won. They did what was right and received what God had promised. They shut the mouths of lions, put Fear, put out fears, fires, escaped being killed by the sword. They were weak but became strong. They were mighty in battle and defeated the armies of foreigners. Hall of faith. And yet, what kind of faith? Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? What kind of faith did they have? 
My gosh, if you read this, it's like a non-stop series of blockbuster action movies. Do you see what I'm saying? Their faith was expressed through daring action. These were men not only of faith, but they were men of faith expressing itself in action. Yes? Schwarzenegger and Gibson and Vin Diesel will have a difficult time portraying these guys. They were men of action. And do you want miracles? Friends, it is when you express your faith in action. In action. I have a. You know, I'm, I was thinking of this. When I was, when my kids were small, we gave them, we, we bought a small set of Lego. Are you familiar with that? They're, they're my, f my kids' favorite toys. And I'm going to reenact to you what happened. Was that fine? Can I ask Francis to come? Francis, can you come here? He's five years old. And Francis, can you come here? Thank you. All right, Francis. We're going to reenact this. So imagine that he's even smaller than this. And, and I'm, we, bought, we bought him a Lego set. And there were about maybe 10 or 12 pieces. And we gave it to him. You can sit down, Francis. You can sit down. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And we, we, we left it to him and he started making stuff. You can start making stuff. <laughs> we didn't rehearse this. Okay. Uh, Francis, you can start making something. Yes, uh, whatever you want. Plain or <laughs> yes. And so we, we, we began to be astonished because from 10 blocks, 10 cubes, something began to happen. Is it finished? Thank you so much. And so it becomes a plane. And we were so astonished that we told ourselves, we have to give him more blocks. And so, can you hold this, Francis? So we got a whole basket, and we gave him more blocks. I told you we didn't rehearse this. This will be better in the second session. Now that's what happens. Francis, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you for helping daddy. You can bring that now. You can bring that now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why, why did I show that to you? Because I believe it's a parallel of how God deals with us. You are a factory of miracles. Who supplies the raw materials? God does. He provides raw materials to you. And what happens is that you create. Now, sometimes the raw materials are very few. You begin with very little. You begin with 10 cubes of Lego. But you see, you need to be able to do something with what you have. Don't complain, I only have 10 pieces. What can I do with this? No, you, 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 do, you do something with what you have. 
Don't complain, I have very little talents. What can I do? I have very little money. How can I start a business? I have very little connections. What? No, you make do with what you have. Are you listening to me? You create a miracle with what God has given to you, with the little time that you have, with the little talents that you have, with the little connections that you have, with the little resources that you have. Use that, create something, because when you create a miracle from what you have, what will God do? He will give you more raw material. He who is faithful in small things, God will give bigger things. Amen? And when that happens, then you realize, remember what I was sharing to you last Sunday? Remember this? Remember that there are two ways of living here in this universe. You can row or you can ride. And believe me, brothers and sisters, there are times when, you know, pe people ask me, Bo, if, if action is so crucial to creating your miracles, will it be just about working? And no, 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 no. It's, it's remember, it's asking and acting. And there comes a point, you know, at the start, I believe that you have to row. I believe that at the beginning, you will have to row. At the beginning, you'll have to develop your muscles. And you need to row. That, that's, that's very important. But then there comes a time as the flow of miracles are surrounding the boat. And there is a current. And you'll be able to ride this current. You will no longer row. You will simply glide. And you need to guide your boat. Yes? Yes? You need to guide your boat in the proper direction. There is a force pushing the boat. And you need to guide it. No longer rowing, but guiding it. Friends, that's exactly why sometimes, and I'm giving you the history of why sometimes we think that faith contradicts action. You look at a particular person and say, look at that guy. He, 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 he totally depends on God. He doesn't act. He doesn't work. That is faith. No, no, no. He, he has gone beyond the roaming. He is now riding, you see. There comes a point in our acting that you move into what I call, what many people call, the anointing of ease. It was Joel Austin who first, who first uh, um, that's, what, that's the first time I, I heard and read about that term. Can you say that? Anointing of ease. It is when you're, you're working, you're rowing, you're rowing, and then there comes a point when it becomes easy. It becomes easy. I, I compare the anointing of ease to watching world-class singers. If you l listen to Celine Dion, or Josh Groban, or Leia Salonga, you know, they, they kind of like transport you to a different place. When you listen to Regine, or Sarah Geronimo, or Charisse, you, you get mesmerized. Am I right? W when you hear Martin Yavera or Gary V or Adrian Panganiban, <laughs> you, you get lost, you know, into a different universe. It's like, wow, these guys are incredible. But, but, what, what strikes you the most, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, what strikes you the most it's like they sing effortlessly. Am I right? It, and you don't know what I'm talking about? D do you notice that? It's like, parang dali dali sa kanila. But no, it took years. Years of practice. But, but finally, when they go on stage, it's so effortless. I compare the anointing of ease also when, when you look at athletes. Michael Jordan. Tiger Woods or uh, Rafa Nadal, you know, when, when they start playing. It was Michael Jordan who was saying this. He was saying that when he is in the zone, can you say that? When he is in the zone, it is as though he cannot make a mistake. It's like he's dribbling his ball and everything is working with him. 
and everything is slow motion. That's how he describes it. Everything is slow motion. When he releases the ball, it's as though you cannot miss. And, and, when he, and when he jumps up in the air, it's as though he won't go down anymore. He is in the zone. He is working. He is acting. But there is something going on. The anointing of ease is a point in your life when you are working, you are producing the miracles, but the power of God is at work. Yes, you are working. Yes, there are problems, but divine interruptions happen. Where God comes in, God shows up and says, here's the provision, here's the equipment, here's the solution to your, to your problems. God comes, and it becomes almost effortless. Almost. And I pray that as we move on, and as you begin to develop your faith, you will more and more experience this in your life. Let me give you an example before we pray. Twenty years ago, when we had that first idea of starting Kerygma magazine, yes, the magazine is 20 years old, I really felt there was an anointing of ease where God supplies the Lego material, when God supplies the raw material to produce the miracle. I remember my sister Tina, 30 years ago, she was working in an office. And she had an office mate by the name of May. Tina invited May to the prayer meeting of the Light of Jesus. May had a sister her name was Chai. And May invited Chai to the Light of Jesus prayer meeting. And that was the time when we decided to start a magazine. I had no idea how to make a magazine. No idea whatsoever. But then, that's what I mean by the anointing of ease. God begins to supply the raw materials. And God gave us Chai. Because Chai just happened to be the editor-in-chief of Maud Magazine, at that time, the number one women's magazine in the Philippines. And when she found out that there was going to be this Kerygma magazine that we're going to launch, she raised her hand. And she said, I'm going to serve there. And that's why we have Kerygma Magazine. After one year, Kerygma Magazine became the number one inspirational country, <laughs> Philippine magazine in the country. It became almost effortless to be able to do what God wanted us to do. And I want to believe that right now. You can produce your miracles. You know, as I emphasize action, I hope I'm not de-emphasizing asking. You need both. You need both. Tell someone beside you, you need both. You need to ask. You need to have faith. You need to believe. You need to depend on God. You need to trust God. But you also need to act. Now, in my emphasizing action, I'm, I hope I'm not de-emphasizing asking. I, I hope I'm not. You know, last Monday, something happened to our family. My mother was rushed to the hospital because her blood pressure was 60 over 40. The normal heart rate of a person, of you and me, would be about 70 heartbeats per minute. Her heartbeat was 40 beats per minute. She, we rushed her to the emergency room. From the emergency room, the doctor said, you have to bring her to the ICU. We brought her to the ICU. Tuesday morning, she was still in the ICU. But you know what? So many people began to pray. You, when you learned about it, some of you, you began to pray. You know, thank God for cell phones. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for all this stuff. But people started calling us up, telling us, we're praying for you. My mother received your love, your prayers, your wishes, your blessings. 
You know, when, when you, we pray for someone, it's not an empty thing. It's not, no, we, we are giving a very tangible gift to someone. When you pray with love, you are giving that person your love, your power, your blessing. Do you understand me? Friends, last Tuesday, my mother was still in the ICU. Today, she stands here, strong as ever. Talk about miracles. Talk about miracles. You know? And I want to believe right now that as we pray for one another, this is the end of our series, and, and if you brought your, your dream board again, you just lift it up again, we're going to be praying for all of them. If you have your novena to God's love, just lift it up again. We're going to be praying for all your dreams. We're going to be claiming for your miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I've got all these dream boards for my family. I want you just to lift it up. And if you don't have a dream board, that's fine. I want you to lift up your dreams, your needs to God. Tell God what you need. Tell God the miracles that you need in your life. I'm sensing that some of you are helpless. You feel helpless. You feel hopeless. Some of you, you're, you feel so down because you've been struggling again and again and again, facing one struggle after another struggle after another struggle. The burdens are too much. I've got a word for you. The blessings of God are much more than your burdens. You have to believe. You have to believe. Yes, it's true there is a valley of tears. It exists. But friends, do not stay in the valley of tears. Do not live in the valley of tears. Do not build your house in the valley of tears. Walk through the valley of tears and climb up the mountain of victory. Your temptation when you've got problems is you, you, you the temptation is to settle. To settle in the valley of tears. To say, this is how life will be. It will always be problematic. It, there will always be all this misery in my life. Don't settle. You will rise. Hold your dreams up high. Say this after me. Father, I believe these dreams that you have placed in my heart will come true. I am a factory of miracles. And through my asking, and through my acting, through my faith, and through my action, I will produce the miracles in my life. Be specific, brothers and sisters. Specify what miracles you need. Hallelujah. You can look at your dream board if you want to remind yourself. These are the miracles that you need. You can read through your novena to God's love. Remind yourself. The miracles will happen. The dreams will be fulfilled. The healing will take place. Your children, parents, you're, you're worried for your children that they're walking away and that they're going astray. I want you to believe. Don't settle. I want you to believe that one day your kids will come serve God. Your kids will have more faith than you. Your kids will grow in the Lord. They will be planted beside the stream and they will bear fruit in abundance. There's some of you, you're praying right now for, for a financial miracle. And I want you to believe that that financial miracle is happening and will happen. It will happen because you ask and it will happen because you act in Jesus' name. The Lego parts will come falling right in front of you. All that you need. The raw materials for the miracle will come. The right people. You know, when Chai walked into that prayer meeting, God said, that's my resource. That's what I want you. The magazine that, that you will launch, 
She's, she's a part of that, and that's why I'm sending her to you. Brothers and sisters, the right people that you need will be walking into your life. Do doors of opportunity will open. You're going to see divine interruptions. God will come in. God will show up in your life, and God will say, here's the equipment that you need. Here are the solutions to the problems. Here is the healing that you need. Here is, is, the, is the resource that you need. God will walk into your life. You have to believe. You have to have faith. It will happen. Open your eyes. Amen? And if you believe that, just, just raise up your hands again and just thank Him. Just thank Him. Spend 30 seconds just thanking God because the miracles will be coming from your life. The raw materials of God will be flowing to you and you will be assembling them and you will be manufacturing them and you will be bringing them as an output into your life. Hallelujah! Just say thank you, Jesus. Just thank God. Thank God with your own words. Just say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus.